open up a tab, grab a seat, and pour a pint. It's time for the Beer Guys Radio Show. You want free beer? Go to the brewery. Dedicated to the art, science, and enjoyment of craft beer. Yeah, what's wrong with the beer we got? Now, here are your hosts, Tim Dennis and Brian Hewitt. And welcome to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We are broadcasting from the Beer Guys Radio Studios in Marietta, Georgia. And this week we are talking with Green Man Brewery. I'm Tim Dennis, and with me as always is my good friend and co-host, Brian Hewitt. Hey, Tim. So joining us today, we have Kyle McKenzie, the head brewer of Green Man Brewing, and Jeffrey Ebner, the brewing manager also of Green Man Brewing. I think we're going to talk a lot about lagers, but also some interesting hopped seasonal and series styles of beer. But everything going on with Green Man and what they're doing in our neck of the woods and, uh, you know, and other places, Up there. yeah. Whatever's Up going where, on, there. wherever Green yeah. Man may be. That's, yeah, that's what right. We're talking yeah. about, right, guys. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. We're glad to be here. And Thank we've you. just uh, we've just cracked open one of your beers here. We're in your Keller Pills. Is that correct? That is right. Can you tell us a little bit about this one? Yeah, sure. This uh, so this is a South Pacific Keller Pills. It is a uh, easy drinking kind of more Czech style Pilsner. Um, uh, not quite as sharp of a mineral profile or uh, as much bitterness as you'd get in uh, a more German um, type lager or Pilsner, excuse me. And it, this one in particular was hopped with uh, two hops from the South Pacific, one from Australia, Australian Summer, and the other one is uh, a hop blend from New Zealand from a farm called Freestyle Farms, and uh, the hop blend is called... Uh, Motu blend, not to be confused with Motu Eka, which is a a, a single variety. That, so uh, this is a hot blend. Yeah. The Motu is a blend. Okay. Yeah. I assume it has some Motu Eka in it, but I am not sure. Um, and so it's uh, it was slightly dry hopped. Uh, it's unfiltered Pilsner. Um, uh, that's why we we're calling it a Keller Pils. Uh, and uh, yeah, we've been really enjoying this uh, at the brewery. It's been a pretty good seller. And did I hear correctly that at the brewery, every single tap in the whole brewery is a slow pour tap of this beer? <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Yeah, so, I, uh, I, I totally wish. Yes. <laughs> uh, <laughs> at full bore, you serve 20 beers a day. Yeah, right? that's right. <laughs> yeah. Full bore, yeah. Well, this is fantastic as uh, Brian nice. and I are in our lager phase right now. So we're really enjoying the Pilsners and all of that. And this is really tasty, really clean, easy drinking beer. Nice change from Big Stouts and all the other craziness we drink. Just a drinking beer. Sure, yeah. A, a, a nicely made drinking beer. Like, there's drinking beers where there's just nothing much there, but this one's got some nice character to it. I like, there's a there's a softness to it with the, uh, I think you were referencing that, the, the Pilsner style that you don't get. I like that. It's, yeah, I could I yeah. kind of get that South Brian Pacific gives it a vibe. yeah. I give it a so yeah. That's, that's a, yeah. I give that's it a good review. one and a yeah. half yes, <laughs> whatever yeah. that means. Or maybe one solid yeah. One yeah. yeah yeah just one real good strong yeah a strong one strong one yeah. strong yeah. yeah okay fair enough now Brian we normally kind of chat about our week here but with scheduling we appreciate you guys working us in you were coming through Atlanta joined us here in the studio so we don't really have a ton to review uh, for what we've done Brian you actually went out to their event last that's night. right yeah so check that out and uh, you guys have been making the rounds in Atlanta here recently correct oh, yeah yeah we've been all over town this whole weekend. So you were at the Institution of Taco Mac last night. We were, yep. yes, sir. You know, what else have you been able to check out around here? Uh, well, we had to go by and visit uh, New Realm because um, we have a an uh, an ex employee who is okay. the, who is now yeah. the head brewer mm-hmm. there. So we had to drop in and see him. Um, and uh, we've been to the original Taco Mac, um, which is, I believe, in Virginia Highlands. Virginia Highlands, yeah. I, indeed. I really like that place. Yeah. Oh, it was, it was rad, yeah. for sure. That's that's my kind of vibe. That, that's I, more Asheville. I feel bad, because I don't think I've ever been to the original Taco Mac. Oh, now really? i gotta, I got to put it on the list. I've wow, got to make that. I know. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's definitely kind of a rough-and-tubble drinking type of bar. And, I yeah, in Asheville, any place that would have a good dive bar scene i'm like it fit right in there it's so different than any other taco mac or t mac as they were called for a while they were they yeah. switched oh. that quick that one definitely not for, a t mac for those not in the atlanta area or the southeast in general uh taco mac is our it's our kind of sports bar chain our wing joint wings and beer and actually there was a time when taco mac was the place in atlanta to go for beer to get beer you know, yeah if you wanted to go they have they've always had a really good tap list and now with the changing things we've got some really really nice beer bars here so I think it was one of the- 
first mug club anything I ever joined, it, which is weird considering how long I've been drinking beer. I think it was Taco Mac. It was kind of a new concept. And I'm like, wait a minute, you know, I can get bonuses and bigger pours if I just hang out and drink all of your beer. Well, sign me up. You know, they've got the the club there that they call. I know that there's different levels to it, and I think the highest one is like Chancellor. I think that's it. Actually, I think they give you a trip to Germany to Oktoberfest. No kidding. If you hit it. But it's it's like 5,000 beers. And I'm thinking wow. about the price of a pint of beer in a bar. <laughs> now, where else have you guys been able to hit while you've been in Atlanta? Let's see. We went to uh, the Ship and Anchor last night. Oh, okay. yeah. Right. Yeah, that was that was fun. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we had a good time there. Um, again, we're... We're dive bar people. Oh, yeah. Okay. Totally. All right. I love a good dive bar. Um, when I go on vacation, I like I, I hunt them down. Find the dive bar? Yeah. Okay. Hunt down neighborhood dive bars are, are totally my thing. Now, our studios in Marietta, Georgia, we got, uh, are you familiar with Johnny McCracken's in up here? Oh, no. Okay. That's, that's our dive bar. And they've got, uh, it's an old firehouse, and they basically just kind of took the living area and the living room's got a couch in it. You can sit there and get your beer or whatever, but it's a really nice dive bar. You can go in there, and you may go from uh, George Strait on the jukebox to Dead Kennedys or the Sex Pistols or whatever. There's no telling what may turn up. And they right. actually now brew their own beer. They're, they, that's they're, right. They're, they're officially a brew pub now. Really? Pub now. Oh. Yeah, they didn't used to be, but they were a great place for a lot of years to go in and, I mean, drink have, have uh, the corned beef there, the uh, corned beef and cabbage. That's what it was. Right. And then smoke a cigar while you're drinking whatever random beers used to be in there. It was And then listen to, you know, who, whatever crazy music is on the jukebox. A great place. A little sketchy in corners, but that's what you want in a good dive bar, I right. think. Just yeah. a little, you don't want it dirty, but a little dingy on everything. Oh, yeah. Just a, a, just a touch. Just, just a, a touch. touch. Yeah. yeah. Some character. Yeah. That's what it's about yeah. is character. Yeah. And they got everything there. I think they're a big PBR place. So from PBR to craft beer, they, they pretty much rock it. They there. got it covered. Yeah. yeah. Everything. Anything you could possibly want. So, uh, Tim, I think we should talk about the beers of the week. Crack open a cold one. It's the Truck and Tap Beer of the Week. Woo-hoo! Craft beer and food trucks in downtown Woodstock. Truckandtap.com. Well, Brian, we've got a fantastic selection of beers here. we got a lot of green, man. I see, I'm see. i looking do. at it right here on the table. We're going to get into it. So, guys, I'm actually going to turn this over to you. Can you just give us a brief synopsis of a few of the beers we're going to get into today? Yeah, sure. Uh, well, we've got... Like we said, we talked about the Keller Pills already. We've also we also have a dessert stout, maybe pastry stout. Would be the pastry people, stouts. Okay, what people it, refer yeah. to it. Is this more a pastry? As a child, <laughs> for sure. Uh, we'll allow it. Uh, yeah, so cool. we'll go with it. Yeah, <laughs> pastry who, for children. Who doesn't like s'mores? I feel like they fall into the. That's a. Uh, it's like the twelve a twelve year old could make this pastry. Oh yeah, eight, an eight year old <laughs> could make this pastry. Not this particular one, but. Uh, so it's called Mose Goes Camping, and that is a, a a bacon s'mores smoked dessert stout. We were trying not to uh, we we're trying to make a beer that a lot of people would like, and then alienate half of them by putting smoke malt in it. Yeah, yeah, it depends. I like a, I like hints of smoking beer, so we'll we'll see. We'll see. I was just thinking it's going to alienate half of the team because I'm down with the smoke, yeah. but yeah. Tim, eh, maybe not. <laughs> a touch. But all those other flavors he's talking about in there. Yeah, I'm they're all, all very intriguing. Those. Yeah, And then we've got some others. We've got IPAs and a bunch of yeah. different ones to get into. Hop today. Hustler, yeah. I see, yeah. and yeah. something Hustler. cosmic. Oh, yeah, that is Hazy Cosmic Jive. So this ah. is, we have a Hazy Homage series. Um, every beer is dedicated to a different band or musician. This one is obviously is a David Bowie beer. Um, oh. Hazy Cosmic Jive is a reference to a Ziggy Stardust song. Um, it's a lyric, uh, actually. And uh, I, I mean, I, I just don't know who doesn't like David Bowie. Sure. I feel like you can David please Bowie's, everybody there. I, I feel like he's fairly pleasing. Crowd pleaser. Um, yeah. All the way around. But because it was called Hazy Cosmic Jive, I could, we couldn't just put any kind of hops in there so this one is pretty heavy on galaxy and then there's also some comet in there to hit up on all those cosmic notes all um, right sounds good to me yeah. i see what you did there we're going to get into yeah. all kinds of good stuff <laughs> yeah we need to take a break you're listening to the beer guys radio show we'll be back to talk to green man right after this Is your brewery or restaurant flooring looking a little worse for wear? Your foundation needs to be protected from heat, chemicals, and other contaminants. 
At the same time, you need something slip resistant yet cleanable with soap and water. Restec has been manufacturing port and place flooring since 2002 and offers a variety of solutions for your facility's needs. If your floor needs a little TLC, visit our website at restec.net. That's R E S T E K.net to contact us and request a free site evaluation. Brian and Tim, the beer guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. Follow the Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Boy, that escalated quickly. I mean, that really got out of hand fast. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you miss an episode, don't worry. All episodes are available as a podcast. Subscribe on your favorite podcasting app and never miss a show. Now back to Kyle McKenzie and Jeff Ebner from Green Man Brewing. Gentlemen, we've been sipping your beers and talking beers and that, and we have just got into your hop hustler can you tell us about this one yeah so this is probably one of the more unique year-round offerings that we're going to do um so the the base beer stays the same um the grain bill stays the same we try to keep it really basic and just change the hops um the whole in in each batch differently so the one we're drinking right now is version one that's in package um, this is Mosaic, Citra, and uh, Hollertal Blanc in the Whirlpool. And then it gets, it was dry hop, two pounds per barrel, Citra, and Mosaic. Um, it's the interesting about thing about this beer is that it only gets hopped in the Whirlpool. It doesn't see any boil hops no at all. No bitter additions, oh, right. no early bitter. You know, yeah, anything, which huh? is which is crazy because we we hop it so heavily in the Whirlpool that it it's it's still bitter. It has bitterness in it for sure, but we didn't want to destroy the great oils and aromatic compounds of those hops that we were putting into it. So you still get a slight bitterness from the hop level, but we are trying to keep all that flavor and all that aroma in still. See, this is this is my kind of IPA. I don't like the big bitterness. I, I'm okay with a little bit there to balance it out, carry the beer. And we were talking uh, off air about just balanced. You know, a lot of balanced beers kind of go under underappreciated sometimes. You know, people want the give me the double IPA. You know, give me big bitterness. I remember, boy, it wasn't that long ago back in our day, Brian. They were making thousand IBU beers, the <laughs> face melter stuff, yes, like thousand yes. IBUs, and people were saying, "Well, you can't taste beyond a hundred IBUs." And people were like, "I don't care. I want five thousand IBUs." Yeah. Then it went to you know just put ridiculous amounts of hops or fruit or whatever in there, but. There's a lot to be said, actually, for just a nice, balanced, you know, drinkable beer. So this is really good. Great, fantastic hop character in this. And just enough bitterness to let you know it's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's got that, that hoppiness in there. The other interesting thing is this is basically a session pale ale or session IPA? Uh, we, we call it a pale ale because the session IPA thing is it gets kind of thrown around there. Yeah. But, uh, we call it a pale ale. It's, yeah, 4.8%. This is... Mainly Golden Promise as our base malt, uh, which is what all of our flagship beers are made out of. It's a it's a heirloom variety um, barley that is grown in Scotland, and we get silo loads of it full, which is very unheard of in in big craft breweries. Um, we focus really heavily on the best ingredients that we can get to make our beers. We are very you know focused on. If we can buy it, if it's going to work for the budget, if it's going to work for the beer that we're going to make, go you know, for it. Go for make it. Make it happen. Huh? Yeah. Okay. And then, um, surprisingly, this beer is absolutely clear, and it is 30% oats. 
if it's, How about that? If it's hazy, is it even a hot? If it's not hazy, is it even a hoppy beer? Uh, Does that count? Yeah. Man? Well, so, I, don't I don't know what to think. So yeah. centrifuges are incredible. Right. Yeah. 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 So so there's a there's this little debate going around the brewery, and I personally am not the biggest fan of super hazy beers. Okay. Um, it is just it's a okay personal thing for me. I I grew up when you know learning to brew like bright clean like bright clear beer is good beer um and then you know just working on the production side i have you know we have 14 tanks that i'm trying to turn over as fast as i can um we have a half a million dollar piece of equipment that is made to make beer clear so everything that i make make use of it so your dislike of hazy beers is it a mental visual thing or is it you don't like the mouth fill or how they carry or or yeah, yes it's it's there's there's a couple different things okay. so a lot of times um you know I, I i do love new england ipa i love the hop character a lot of times i taste some of them and i get there's a yeast bite and there's a certain flavor that too much suspended yeast puts into a, a packaged beer is the it's it's you're you're better off. I'd rather drink a, a diacetyl bomb than than a yeah, beer that's butter butter yeah. Beer. I I would legitimately drink a butter beer before I drink a yeast bomb, and that's just it's not showing the beer for what it is. You know, it's okay. if you drop your that yeast out, get it clear, let it be beautiful. You know, if this was just in a can and you couldn't see the color of it, then why does it matter? And that's why all these beers are how they're being consumed. You know, most of them are being consumed out of the can. A lot of them get poured into glasses, and they see the haze factor. But if you can make a crystal clear beer that has all that same beautiful hop character, you know, what does it matter? Those no, hazy the, tones, though. The, the hazy tones. tones. The those tones. hazy tones. Yes. Your palate just is not able to perceive yeah. that hazy tones. The hazy yeah. boys. That's right. The haze bros <laughs> loves those tones. Now, I, I, with an, another nice thing about a really clear beer, I bet when you put glitter in it, it shows up really nicely. Ooh, that's yes. Right. Oh, yeah, awesome. true. Yeah. Very yeah. true. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. The glitter just pops. Just pops. Yeah. Really yeah. pops in this beer. So I have to I have to ask, when are we going to see the next edition? Because I looked at the website, and I was intrigued by two things. You are printing the batch number on the bottles, which I love. Mm-hmm. Love seeing that. But it said coming soon. There's another one. So is that dropping very soon? Are we looking at like six months or how is that going to work? So out? if you are actually in the Atlanta market right now, you can go to Taco Max, any of the Taco Max in Atlanta, and drink the newest batch of oh. Hot Bustler. Because I made, I brewed a 60 barrel batch just for the Taco Max in Atlanta. Okay. All so right. you will. Now, where all do you guys distribute to? How, how far does Green Man get out there? Um, we are in. North Carolina, South Carolina, um, Virginia. Just announced in the news, actually, this week when as we were recording mm-hmm. that they expanded into Virginia. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Virginia now, um, Florida, um, Tennessee. Very cool. Good. And I'm sure I'm, I'm sure I'm missing one, Kyle. Help me out here. Put you on put the brewer <laughs> under pressure to remember no, 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 the entire yeah, distribution you, footprint. Uh, you hit all you hit all of them. Uh, did I hit yeah, all yeah. of them? Yeah. So we got Tennessee, Virginia, North Carolina, South Carolina, Florida, and Georgia. We're Close to statewide in almost all of those regions. We don't Pretty really close, go past yeah. Nashville and Tennessee, and 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 we are not quite to D.C. and Virginia. Mm-hmm. So we're into Northern Virginia, but we don't go all the way. Uh, don't go all, all the way, way north. D.C. Okay, um, we have a station in D.C., so maybe our D.C. folks can take a run down a little bit and look for some of your beers yeah. there. Yeah, but if you make, you can make it down and uh, to Richmond or to. Um, Charlottesville or Roanoke, Mm -hmm. um, we are in those markets as well. Yeah, we're just, I mean, we're really excited. Atlanta has been um, a really great market for us to come into. uh, Very, fairly recently, we've only been in the Atlanta market for probably a couple years. years. Three years. Have we been in? You know, I know it's, that's what I remember going to an unnamed bar who had a sign on the wall that said, now available Green Man ESB. And that was, I, I think that was before it was officially in the state. And we got to talk about it. They're like, they're coming soon. We, we so. opened originally in, uh, in you know, the Athens, Gainesville markets. And then we slowly came to Atlanta. Atlanta is a very large 
beer market. It's a thirsty town and here, man. It is. And, uh, you know, th- it's it's fairly common knowledge when you talk to a lot of brewers uh, and, and, and brewery owners that Atlanta can sometimes be a black hole where you push beer and you don't, and like, you can never fill it up. You know, and as far as a brewery goes, that's that's good for you to serve enough to where as long as people aren't constantly looking for your beer and not being able to find it, you got to feed enough to where it's usually there because for a brewery, you know, you don't look, we know how the beer geeks are. If your beer's always on the shelf, every time they go, if they can always find it there and it's a, a shelfie, you know, it's not, mm-hmm. but if there's enough coming in where they can usually get it, but occasionally they have a little trouble, that's, that's good for a brewery. But I will tell you what, retailers and distributors do not like that at all. Sure. Because then you got to answer all the questions of <laughs> yeah, where is it, where is it, where yeah, is it. Yeah, exactly. So. They, you know, they, they get bit by that. So. The fear of missing out is huge when it comes to beer. If it if you know that it's not going to be there all the time, mm-hmm. when you see it, I'm like, I have to buy it now because if I don't, I will miss out. Yeah, the FOMO, Brian. FOMO. FOMO. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break, but we will be back right after this. Craft beer forged with a reverence for tradition and new styles that start a revolution. Ironmonger Brewing. The brewers at Ironmonger Brewing pride themselves at being masters of barrel-aged, hoppy, and sour beers. They invite you to their tap room in Marietta, Georgia to taste and see. Also visit their barrel room for an intimate drinking experience with great live entertainment. Keep up to date on all things Ironmonger by liking them on Facebook. Ironmonger Brewing, establishing a new standard in craft beer. We are Reformation Brewery, celebrating the reformer in you. Locally crafted within the renowned Etowah watershed of Woodstock, Georgia, Reformation creates yeast-forward brews full of aroma and flavor crafted to last. Come see us in beautiful Woodstock, Georgia, for a tour and tasting of unique brews that you can't find anywhere else. Reformation Brewery, set beer free. ReformationBrewery.com the beer guys on facebook twitter and instagram you passed out cigarettes for a smoke on on earth day you installed speed bumps on the handicapped ramp and most recently you dumped a hundred pounds of meat on a peaceful vegan protest oh come on that was way more than a hundred pounds now back to the beer guys radio show Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. I want to give a quick shout out to one of our great radio affiliates, WBQO 93.7 FM in Brunswick, Georgia. Catch Beer Guys Radio on WBQO every Sunday at 1 p.m. Eastern. Now back to our conversation with Kyle McKenzie and Jeff Ebner from Green Man Brewing. Guys, we've got into another one of your beers here, and we're going to get a quick rundown on this because we could spend another full segment talking about the beers. We're sharing, Brian is sharing one of his favorites with you now. So you're you're drinking Georgia. We're drinking some Green Man. And Brian, uh, you gave them the Mountain Jam. The Mountain Jam. That, I love this Mountain Jam. all about jam. there. Yeah. And that's, uh, is that Southbound? Is that right? That is Southbound. And that's their yeah. lager. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so you're one of your favorites to slow pour at the house, right? Yeah, I faux slow pour. I loved it before I started doing that, the but pour. after I started faux pouring at home, yeah. I loved it even more. Good stuff, so. man. And we've got a hazy cosmic jive IPA here that's got a really cool label with some. Uh, what do they call that? That the label's doing? Is uh, that just a shimmer, kind of a prismatic effect, yeah. right? Yeah. So that's really cool. Uh, tell us a little bit about this one. Okay, so that is our fifth installment in our Hazy Homage series. Um, All of these beers are a homage to either a band or an artist. Um, This particular one is a homage to David Bowie, a.k.a. Ziggy Stardust. And, uh, yeah, Hazy Cosmic Jive is a, a lyric from a song. And because we were going with the cosmic uh, theme with this beer, we ended up uh, hopping it throughout with a galaxy and comet. Galaxy is obviously uh, um, an Australian hop, and a comet is probably a lesser known U.S. variety. I see what you did there. Galaxy and comet. Mm. It's cosmic, Brian. It's very it's cosmic. cosmic. And there's a lightning bolt or many on the can. Yes, there is. There's a lot of atmospheric and cosmic things happening with it. It is beer. sexy and tasty and cosmic. Yes. Good yes. stuff. 
Well, guys, we want to talk a little bit. Uh, we want to talk about your tap rooms. So the last time that I was up in Asheville, uh, which I guess was a few years ago, I think the Green Mansion was under construction. How long has that been open now? Green Mansion has been open for three years. I think it was uh, really close yeah, last time I yeah. was up there. As of uh, St. Patrick's Day. So our grand opening would have been St. Patrick's Day 2016. Okay. And what is the Green Mansion? So Green Mansion is kind of a uh, – that's just what we – started calling it because it's a the it's a three-story you know 15,000 square foot packaging hall and tap room it has uh there's two tap rooms there's a there's an upstairs mezzanine level that actually overlooks the packaging hall so you can uh drink beer there during the week and watch uh and watch the packaging line run um and you can also uh drink downstairs on the ground level 18 taps, both locations, and it's a much bigger and uh, nicer looking uh, tap room than our original. Drinking overlooking the packaging line is kind of like those little airports that have a restaurant on the flight line watching planes land. Yeah, yeah watch, exactly. Watch yeah. The, oh, look, that beer is coming through, man. I love that one. I think I have an important question. With a place like the Green Mansion, can you Scrooge McDuck through a vat of hops? Can you dive into it and Ooh, swim around? That's, that's what a, I want to know. Yeah, that's a great idea. We should We should look at that. Uh, it would be a very expensive swimming pool of hops. But very aromatic. It would be very, very aromatic. And sticky. Yeah. yeah. And sticky. Sticky yeah. and aromatic. So the the original uh, tap house, or the, the place that was open to the public, and I think where you're brewing your beer, you call it Dirty Jacks. Why is it called Dirty Jacks? So the term Dirty Jacks goes uh, back quite a ways um, uh, to our... Uh, our previous owner um, uh, owned Jack of the Wood, which is an English pub uh, in Asheville. And uh, Dirty Jack's was where they moved the the brewery when he still owned Green Man. And we, um, at that point in time, we were almost exclusively brewing beer for Dirty Jack's and Jack of the Wood. And Dirty Jack's became the term that people would use to say, I, "I'm going to I'm going to meet you." at the at the uh at the brewery as opposed to jack of the wood so it's jack of the wood but people would say you know at that point in time people kind of still referred to it as like jack of the wood brewing company or jack of the okay, wood brewery gotcha. but it was right. green man right. brewery was the brand and so people were, would get confused and you'd ask your buddy to meet you at the bar and he'd show up the wrong one and so they started just calling it dirty jacks uh, and dirty jacks originally was a was was basically the Asheville adult soccer leagues like clubhouse yeah. um they they hung out there they we still air an insane amount of soccer games if if you love soccer and you are in the Asheville area we watch you know Bundesliga we watch British Premier League we watch La Liga, we watch uh, we watch um, La Liga MX, which is the Mexican league. We, there's MLS games on. We're right down the street from the semi-pro uh, club, Asheville club, um, so we get a lot of influx from them before and after the games. So it's a very soccer-centric bar. If there's not soccer on, we watch baseball and hockey and all sorts of other very interesting European sports. Do you ever watch sports. the Ocho? ESPN yeah. the Ocho there, get some of that stuff? <laughs> I don't. Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I Those are I ones like uh, competitive basket weaving and oh no, just I, the crazy. I, I, the I don't crazy think we. I don't think there. we've watched any. You of that. should check that out when soccer's yeah. not on. Turn yeah. on the Ocho. Yeah. See what's going down there. Yeah. But we It'll also watch time. quite a bit of rugby. So. You know, Atlanta's a big soccer town now. It so is. We're we're all about it. And uh, when Atlanta United opened as a as a franchise. Three quarters of Asheville was definitely. They were all on about board. everybody's. Yeah. The amount of Atlanta United stuff in Asheville is insane these days. The um, the amount of it here is also insane. Is. I think our sound panels are basically Atlanta United sound panels. Well, it's now that you I know Georgia it. red and black. You know Bulldogs and that. Too. Oh yeah, so it's true. it's very Georgia. Yeah. Cent- all of our teams kind of have red and black. So it's kind of do. Yeah, it's a nod to Georgia here. Absolutely, oh. I thought it was appropriate. We've got so many other colors. You know, there's a lot of green and stuff. So I thought. Red and black was good for the studio. It does make sense. Agreed. It does make sense. It fits out so, pretty well. So, Jeff, uh, your title is brew house manager. At least that's what we're told. But you actually do a fair amount of brewing too, right? Yeah, yeah, I do. Uh, I'm I'm probably about ninety percent of our actual production. Work no production. kidding. Yeah, I yeah. was wondering how that breakout was because 
they, they said, oh, yeah, these guys kind of like split the brewmaster, the, the head brewer title. You yeah, know? yeah, yeah. We, we, um, we kind of divvy up the jobs um, as, as well as we can. Uh, I run the 30 barrel um, production brew house, which is operating Monday through Friday, every day of the week. And so every beer that you see in Atlanta um, at Taco Mac or at, you know, Total Wine that's in a, in a package, it's, there's a, a good percentage chance that I touch that beer at some point, you know, in the production line. That being said, if you see a tart berry or, you know, one of our crazy, you know, hazy homage series that happened to slip through the cracks and make it, make it to Atlanta, that's all, that's all Kyle. He runs the... He has the fun job of making the 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 crazy new beers that <laughs> the, the enviable job. Yeah, yeah. Now, this, now I'm just doing the math here. If you guys are co co head brewers mm-hmm. and you're doing ninety percent of the brewing, <laughs> yeah. How are you getting away with ten percent of the work Ooh, over there? He, he's got a so, Kyle has yeah. to do more of the more of the behind the computer work, which I am oh, totally that's okay with. Yes. Yeah, I get to spend yeah. a little bit more time behind a computer doing ordering okay. and contracting and. We saw all a sorts job of other fun stuff like that. All the goods, all the stuff that's not actually making beer. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. I, I still get to brew. Uh, I brew, but I brew on the small production or the small specialty system, probably two times a week. But I also am that little brewery. I run almost completely on my own, and that's kind of where we do a, a good bit of the recipe development. I mean, you can only really take recipe development so far. Uh, and then Jeff has taken over all of that, uh, all of that heavy. Okay. All well, you he- got to have someone to do that. All the heavy lifting. Yeah, yeah. He's, I was he's a hard worker there. I was very excited when we hired Jeff. That he was taking over that kind of stuff because I I'd, I'd done it for about two years and I wasn't burnt out on it. I really wanted to do some specialty. I would imagine that most brewers that's what they want. It's fun, man, and we like to drink those too. Everybody wins. You're listening to the Beer Guys Radio Show. We do need to take a break, but we'll be back very soon to talk more with Green Man Brewing. As a brewery owner or tap room manager, are you looking for ways to enhance your customer experience while maximizing your revenues? Craft Cellar is a mobile solution that helps your brewery drive sales and attract new customers through online pre-sales for beer releases, events, and memberships. Get details now at craftseller.com. Mention Beer Guys Radio after sign up and extend your free trial to a full 30 days. Remember craftseller.com. C R A F T C E L L R.com. It's Brian and Tim, the Beer Guys. If you're like us, no lunch or dinner is complete without a pint or two of craft beer. Which is why Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth are always on our list. Tim, why do they call it Truck and Tap? Well, the tap part is easy, Brian. They've got 18 of them. As for the truck part, that's where it gets interesting. Truck and Tap features your favorite Atlanta area food trucks, so you're getting a different menu every day. Truck and Tap in downtown Woodstock, Alpharetta, and Duluth. Truckandtap.com. Let them know that the beer guys sent you. The Beer Guys on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Cannibal! Cannibal coming. Now, back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. Welcome back to the Beer Guys Radio Show. If you enjoy the show, please consider supporting us on Patreon. Just go to patreon.com slash beerguys. Patrons can get some cool perks like Beer Guys swag and commercial-free episodes. Now more from Kyle McKenzie and Jeff Ebner from Green Man Brewing. Guys, we've enjoyed several of your tasty beers, and we just we've been sipping on this one a while now. It's uh, is it called Moe's Goes Camping, right? And this is a smoky s'mores stout, right? Yes, get sir. the taste of the campfire in there with it, yeah. right? Yeah, all right, yep. And that's uh, that's tasty beer, man. Really good. I love these types of things. And we, as I mentioned, I'm not huge on smoking beers. But if there's a hint there and it plays well with the other flavors, I don't want one that's just all smoke. Brian, he'll take a smoke bomb. He's totally oh, yeah. fine. But uh, so I've heard that this is going to be regular production and you love brewing it. The, it'll be made every other month. Uh, absolutely for not. For regular release. Not going to happen. Absolutely no? not. No, no yeah. not at all. <laughs> Look for fresh batches <laughs> weekly. <That's how> <laughs> yeah. Well, guys, we want to talk to you some about uh, some of your green initiatives. With Green Man, you're a very environmentally conscious brewery, correct? 
we do uh, we have some environmental initiatives that we're trying to trying to push. A lot of them are just end up being common brewing practices like uh, reclaiming uh, cooling water into our hot liquor tanks. You know, uh, trying not to put uh, massive amounts of uh, of chemicals down the drain. But for the most part, you know, our green initiatives are starting and stopping with us trying to uh, source raw ingredients from a uh, from a perspective where where we're limiting those uh, those overall overall costs. Obviously, we're getting our malt shipped in from England, so that has a fairly large carb- carbon footprint. Um, but with the with the specialty malts and uh, and uh, stuff like that, we like to partner with some of the local um, purveyors of malt. Um, like Riverbend, that like, we were talking yeah, about Riverbend yeah, yeah. Malt House and yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, we got Riverbend, and then there's uh, Carolina Malt House, which is in Cleveland, North Carolina, and they source all of their malt from with about 30 miles of the, of the maltster. Um, and so that's just, you know, just those are, those are simple ways to reduce the carbon footprint on the shipping of those malts uh, across the country and, and that kind of thing. I think most brewers try pretty hard to be fairly environmentally friendly as it is. You know, you're using water, you know, from the earth, you're using grains and that, you want to take mm. care of it. And even more so, Asheville's a very environmentally conscious area in general there. So yeah, got to yes, take sir. care of things there. So it's uh, it's important. Brian, sure. it's important stuff. A lot of yeah, you know, a lot of brewers have gotten wise to the. We could just throw away the grains, but a lot of them are putting them out to farm, letting the farms. animals eat them. I know that uh, previous people we've talked to have actually wound up using the the cattle that have have eaten the grain yeah. a, as a protein on their plates. Yeah. So that's, yeah. that's that's kind of a cool thing. Fantastic yeah. way to so, go. Yeah, we actually have so the the farmer that picks up our grain is um he's been picking up his family has been picking up from us for over 20 years now. Wow. Same okay. farm. And uh if you would like to try the, you know, the the product that we gave him that he uses, they he actually sells a good portion of his beef to White Labs, which is right across the street for their all their burgers. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Right. We, yeah. we have done the full circle, the full life cycle one time. A brewery here gives their grain to a farmer, and he raised, I think, pigs there. Yep. But he came back to the brewery and set up and grilled. He did, he was doing pork, pork burgers. Rather than, you know, hamburgers, he did pork burgers. And I will tell you this. That was one of the finest burgers, sandwiches I've had. It was really good. And so I'm drinking the beer that they brewed with the malt that they fed the pigs that was in, in my burger. Yeah. So it was pretty cool. In yeah. the house that Jack built. In the house yes, that Jack exactly. built. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And and I don't think uh, people really understand the the importance of the farmer to the brewer. Like it's it, – they go they go hand in hand. You know, without, without um, our farmer picking up our grain, we would not be able to operate. Like period. Like it would cost us, you know – hundreds of thousands of dollars get you know grain removed so without him taking it from us for free we wouldn't be able to to operate period right that's i mean i've thought of that so many times really cool the way that worked out that there is you know a farmer can make use of that because breweries make a lot of a lot of spent grain yeah Yeah. they do insane there's an insane amount of spent grain that comes out of that we we produce about uh about 12 tons a week of spent grain it's gonna feed a lot of farm animals Mm. yeah yeah so switching gears, I have to ask about your Ask a Brewer page. It's on your website. It's been out there for a while, and uh, I'm curious. You, you probably get there's probably some common questions you get, but I, I really would like to know the weird ones, like the really off the off the wall ones. Tell me a little bit about what you hear from that. So uh, we don't necessarily get lots and lots of weird ones. I mean, the ones that I really like to tackle are I. You, we get a lot of questions from home brewers. Yeah, um, sure. And asking. Yeah. Asking for advice, or or how did you do this, or how did you do that, or would you be willing to give up like some details about this recipe or that recipe because I'm trying to make a clone or whatever the case may be. And I really, I I oftentimes respond to those emails and probably a little too lengthy of an answer. I'm kind of a long talker what? or a long. <laughs> I never would have guessed. Yeah, Inconceivable. Yeah, yeah, but exactly. it's detailed. They get the details. Yeah, in the yeah. Email, I don't right? want. I don't want to mm-hmm. leave anything out. Um, and so, you know, they might re- they might send in like a three question, you know, single paragraph, um, and th- they get back like a page and a half of <laughs> me just going on some crazy diatribe about about how they could uh, how they could you know fix this problem that they're talking about or, <laughs> or 
or, or whatever the case may be. Um, I asked dude about how to homebrew, and he gave me a manifesto. I don't even know what to do. <laughs> I think we should encourage people to do that. I mean, I'm sure people go into the page and they see Ask a Brewer. I'm sure they think it's to ask about beer or brewing and that. I encourage everyone to email you and ask for life advice. Life you advice. Know, ask yeah. a brewer hey, for life advice. Right. My kids are getting yeah. older. I'm looking at a 401k or a college fund. Yeah. I, I see my inbox I just, 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 just lighting up there, away man. Right Absolutely. Now, yeah. I, yeah. I will give out lots of life advice. There I don't know go. that it's going to be any solid you advice. But you'll give it, right? <laughs> I'll, I'll give it out. Like a drunk Dear Abby. This is amazing. I love this. Right? this I love be, this idea. Send in life questions. Life questions for the brewer. There. But at the end of the shift, after you know several beers, yeah. the, the alpha hours there be a good time. And the fingers go to work emailing people back. Now, speaking of homebrewing, you guys say pretty openly there, hey, we're we definitely encourage you, homebrewers, hit us up and, and do that. How how much do you give away if someone tells ask you that they're trying to clone your beer? So there's actually even a local homebrew shop in Asheville that we have given two recipes away to. I don't feel like recipes, it's really, really difficult to take just recipe a recipe that doesn't have any process information and make something that tastes exactly like the product that that you're trying to clone. Well, just like you know? we talked about going from your pilot system up to your big system, thing, same thing's going to apply trying to go down to a five or 10 gallon yeah. batch. Too. Yeah. And, you know, and, and both me and Jeff, you know, came from a homebrewing backgrounds. Um, I love giving back to the homebrewing community. Homebrewing community is uh, the craft beer community would not be where it is today without the homebrewing Absolutely. community. Sure. You know, sure. I mean, there's 7,400 breweries in growing in, in the United States, and I would venture to guess the last. 5,000 of them uh, were all started by homebrewers. Absolutely. You know I mean? Very yeah. likely. And that's where a lot of the innovation is going. They're, those guys are the ones pushing innovation. You know, would people be talking about, I mean, would pro brewers be talking about Kvike and, 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 and about mixed culture and, um, and those things if it weren't for homebrewers originally, like, pushing into a lot of those territories or pushing harder into those territories? Homebrewers are doing an v- incredible amount of experimentation that is sometimes difficult to do for pro- for large production brewers. Well, you've got, got like we were talking about Michael Tonsmere a little bit earlier, the, the mad fermentationist. He wrote American Sour Beers. There's a guy that does a website called Brewlosophy oh, yeah. where he does his experiments. Sure. And these guys are getting, you know, really breaking it down, something that maybe a brewer doesn't have time to do all this but you know that's good information and it's kind of synergistic you know we get ideas from the pro brewers the home brewers are out there playing around having a good time with crazy stuff you got to glean information from anywhere you can so i think we have to touch on this you have a new charity ipa coming out called luv avl and it's a brute ipa all right so that uh that beer is going to be a uh, charity beer um that we're making for blue ridge pride it's a brewed IPA. Um, it is currently focused on on laurel hops, um, and it has some uh, also a, um, a pretty heavy dose of Nelson Savon in it. I am a huge fan of the brewed IPA style. Um, you know, I think we're running short on time. If people want to keep in touch with uh, Green Man and what you guys are up to, what's the best way to do that? Okay, so you can follow uh, Green Man Brewery on Instagram um, and Facebook. Um, those are probably the two best ways uh, to follow us currently. Good stuff. Guys, thank you so much. We appreciate you coming by the studio, chatting with us, and sharing your beers. Yeah, thanks so much. Yeah, thanks for having us, guys. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode of the Beer Guys Radio Show. Coming up next week, we'll be talking with Wooden Robot Brewery. For more craft beer info, follow us online. We are Beer Guys Radio on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Thanks again for tuning in. Have a great week, and don't forget to drink local. Cheers. Cheers.